So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do rigging in Maya for motion capture. We're going to skip over modeling, so um, we're not going to really focus on modeling and texturing. Um, we're also going to skip over motion capture animation for now and skip over keyframing um, once you have a completed rig. And this is also not a video about motion capture itself, how to perform motion capture. We're going to assume we have some motion capture data and we want to rig a character in order to animate it. So what are the main steps here? We see that um, um, we're going to start with a, a normal rigging would start with bone placement on a, on a model. Um, and then you may paint weights or use a tool to automatically generate weights. The result of that is called an FK rig or a forward kinematic rig. We're going to start this video with a forward kinematic rig that's already created. So a lot of, a lot of um, rigs that you'll find online, they already come as forward kinematic rigs where the, the bones will move the skin, or deform the skin. So that will be done for us. From there, there's really two approaches in Maya. You can either follow a keyframe workflow in which your, your goal is to animate manually with keyframes, or you can follow, follow a motion capture workflow. And in this video, we're gonna be following the motion capture workflow. So um, the first step after getting an FK rig that has skin deformation is creating a character definition that provides features specific to humans. Um, this essentially maps the, the rig to something which has human um, body parts. We're then gonna create a custom rig, and that custom rig is used to draw, to allow motion capture to drive the rig. In a normal workflow, you might create a control rig, which will give you IK handles, and those IK handles along with the FK is what you would animate. But in this case, we would like arbitrary motion capture to animate our rig. So we're going to add um, a custom rig to this and use the source motion for motion capture in order to bake down the motion onto our character, and that allows us to animate. The motion capture data can come from anywhere. It, it can come from any recording system that does motion capture. Um, we're going to use some examples that are available for free online. There is a common format for this, um, BVH or FBX. BVH has to be converted to FBX through Motion Builder. Um, I'll show you how to do that. And then we need to use Maya to retarget so that it also has a character definition. Once our motion capture and our primary character both have a character definition, then we can apply that motion capture to our source, and I'll show you how to do this. So this video is really going to show you how to cleanly create a rig that you can reuse and animate using various pieces of motion capture. So essentially, our focus is how to do a motion capture rig. So here we are in Maya, and I've loaded this rig up, um, this model. This model um, is called Nathan. It's a free model you can find online. This uh, rig has bones and FK. I mentioned we're starting with an FK rig. This also has an animation in it, but that doesn't matter. We're going to be getting rid of that. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to turn off, turn on x-ray joints so that we can see the skeleton. And I think it's best to go to turn off hardware texturing just so you can focus more on the skeleton. Um, remember, this is a rigging tutorial. So we're going to focus more on the skeleton and basically figure out how to work with this. So the first thing to do is every character really is ideally rigged in a T-pose. And this simplifies a lot of other things downstream. And if you do this, you're going to make your life a lot easier. So what we're going to start is by changing to a front perspective. That will give us a really kind of straight on look of the character. <clears throat> and then we're just going to rotate a few of the joints so that they're in the T-pose in the very first frame. There, was, there are some issues here with this rig in terms of the blend weights are not quite correct. Um, we're not going to worry about that. That's really a kind of like precursor state problem, which is the FK rig needs to be better designed a little bit. Um, for now, we just want to get this character in the T-pose. And so here we have a character now in a T-pose and ready for the next step. So as I mentioned, the first step is to take an FK rig and create a character definition. And we're going to do that now. So a few things that I like to do to start creating character definition. One, it's very helpful to have the outliner open. Um, this lets you move up and down the hierarchy without having to find the bones. Um, so we have the Nathan rig here. It's very easy to, um, in the outliner, to select either the geometry 
or to move down in the tree as I need to without having to find these things. The other thing um, is I like to use these icons at the very top right. This one opens the attribute editor, which shows you the kind of transformations for a specific thing that you've selected. And this right next to it is the character um, definition, which we're going to be working on. Switching between these is a lot is very easy if you remember that these are here and that allows you to kind of work on the rig and then modify parameters and keep working on the rig. So to create a new character definition, we want to click here in this, this third one down for create character definition. Um, this creates a kind of blank um, temp that we could start with. And the very first thing to do is identify the hips. The hips are considered to be the root of most humanoid characters. Um, it's usually pretty easy to identify the hips because the hips is this, the bone that has three children to it. So if I select the spine, that has just a, one joint connected to it. The leg has one connected. Um, the other leg has one connected, but the hip joint has this, those three as children. That is, those three are underneath it in the, in the outliner. Don't go too up high in the hierarchy. Some rigs, such as this rig, have some additional joints that we don't actually want to be using as the center. So be sure that you find the hip, which has three children, and that is what you're going to assign to the hips here. So I click on the, that. I right click and do assign selected to bone. Um, now I'm just gonna go through the bones and select them and assign them. So the spine, assign selected. Um, if there's a little arrow, I can zoom in there. I'm not gonna do any of the spine, um, the spine segments in between because this rig doesn't really have them. Then I'm going to do the left arm. Uh, I can turn off the mirroring by clicking this icon here and that will allow me to assign left and right separately without mirroring. So I usually want to do that. I'm not gonna go through and do all my finger assignments, but you can usually do that too. You can do that as well to assign each finger joint. You just click on this and then assign the FK joints to your fingers. Um, not gonna do that right now. I'm gonna switch to the other side, uh, select the right upper arm, reassign that, and right forearm, and now the right wrist. The head is usually the joint that control is in the center of the head and controls the most the upper portion of the head. I'm going to assign that. I'm not going to worry about the neck at this point. The nice thing about the technique I'm going to show you is that it doesn't matter that your FK rig does not exactly match, have all of those joints. Um, that shouldn't matter. I'm going to continue down to the legs now. Assign the right leg. Uh, let's see here. Assign the, the left leg, I mean. And now I'm going to assign the right leg and the left lower leg, right lower leg. Uh, and now go in here and do the left foot and the right foot. Okay, so, so now those are assigned. I get an exclamation and the exclamation actually is saying that these don't appear to be parallel to the x-axis, meaning I'm not exactly in the t-pose. So you might be able to clean this up and get it closer to a real T-pose where all of the joints are parallel or straight with the X-axis. Um, I can adjust this one a little bit right now. So it does the, the rigging system in Maya really does prefer things to be in a like perfect T-pose. Um, if they're not, it doesn't really matter too much. As long as your FK rig is well enough to find, um, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. So I'm just going to ignore that exclamation for now and you can always kind of come back and fix it later. Uh, I'm just trying to select this upper arm here, right? Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So that does it for the character definition. Um, I might want to rename this character definition. I can do that by clicking on this icon here and just say rename character, um, Nathan. Um, and right now I'm not, um, I haven't driven this from anything else and I'm ready for the next step. <clears throat> So as I mentioned, we're going to focus on motion capture, but I do want to show you just very quickly how you would go to the keyframe workflow from here, just because it's actually really not that hard to do if you've gotten this far. So once you have an FK rig and you've done character definition, getting to a control rig is actually quite easy. And you do that simply by doing this. All you do is you click on this icon here, which is create control rig. And it'll create what's called a control rig, which is for defining your IK handles on your current rig. So I just press that and now I should have a working control rig. You can see that as I move joints, they follow the IK handle um, as you would expect them to. It's added all the IK controls. 
So this is how animators who do keyframe animation really prefer to work, which is you have both IK control and FK control. So FK, um, just a very quick refresher, FK means that all of the joints outward from a place continue to, will move when I rotate something. So if I move this joint, it only moves everything outward away from that joint, like the hand and the wrist. But if I go to the shoulder, then it will move the elbow and the wrist. And that's FK meaning forward or away from the center of the body towards the extremities. If we think of the body as a tree, it basically means the flow of information is from the core downward to the, the extremities. So that's FK. And IK means that I can take something as a controller and it will automatically figure out the joints in between. And there are times when you'd like to use one or the other. So sometimes you would like to use FK, for example, if the arms are just naturally swinging. So the times that you might want to use IK are when you want to move the, the body, but you want certain extremities to stay in their positions. So for example, you can see how the, le the feet stay planted here. Even as I move the body up and down, I can bend the knees, but the feet will stay planted. And that's a very common thing to do in animation because our feet stay planted when we walk, um, when we touch the ground. Um, the same thing if this hand were touching a table, then you have the same kind of feature. So IK, uh, sorry, FK is animating if you want to like swing the arms, and IK is if you want to control some extremity and have the rest of the body move with it. And now that we've done a control rig, we are essentially have met that those needs to create an IK F FK rig for animation. So going back to our um, our diagram, this is essentially now complete. We've created an IK rig, a completed IK FK rig, and now we're ready to do keyframe animation and uh, animate based on um, keyframing the character. This is not what really we're covering here, and we're not going to go into keyframe animation, but I just wanted to show that it's actually not so difficult to create an IK FK rig. We're going to focus more on the motion capture rigging um, and show a few of the steps that are involved there. So let's move on to the next. Step in that, we're gonna go back to our character definition, remove the control rig, and then we're gonna create a, instead of what's called a custom rig, which can be controlled from other sources. So here we are back with a with the Nathan rig. Um, this is just at the character definition stage. So we have a definition, but no controls. Um, I've already applied the definition, so we're ready for the next step. Um, this does not have a, a, con, a, cust, a control rig, so we're gonna add now a custom rig. So instead of doing this icon, the control rig, I'm going to do the one next to it, which is create custom rig. So by clicking on this, I'm going to get a blank diagram. There's no IK handles created. Um, I'm starting to create a custom rig for motion capture. So this may seem tedious, but I have to kind of go through the same process to find the custom rig, which is to assign um, the bones to my character in the, in the custom rig. So I'm assigning the these parts to as effectors for the this custom rig. I know this this does seem a little bit repetitive because we just did this for the definition, but we need to do this again for the um, for the custom rig. So I'm just going to assign these here. Remember, the hips is the one that has three children to it. So if we open this up in the outliner, we see that it's the group that um, it's the bone here that has three underneath it. And this is the one that we assign to the center. This only has one joint in the spine, and we may be able to find more here. Right now, I'm just going to assign this, this next joint up to this. Um, going back now, I'm going to do this, um, this um, T joint in the chest, assign that here. Um, and then the head will be the head joint. Okay, and now uh, just finish up with the legs. Okay, so that allows me to create the custom rig. That uh, is basically ready for animating for motion capture. Of course, there's nothing really to control here. It will still act, if you're just doing it manually animating it, it will still act like an FK rig. You won't really see anything new added, um, but this is now ready for us to basically apply motion capture data to. And that's the next step, is to prepare our motion capture data. So as I mentioned, our next step is to prepare motion capture data. That involves taking motion capture data that we have and 
converting it to an FBX format, and then adding a character definition to it. And I show how to do that through Motion Builder. Um, Maya itself does not allow you to convert a BVH to an FBX. I very much hope they add this. But right now, in order to open a BVH, which is a common kind of free standard for motion capture data, you need to convert it into an FBX using Motion Builder. So, so what we're going to do next, I'm going to open up Motion Builder here. And I'm going to open my BVH file. Sorry, I'm going to import my BGH file as doing motion file import. I have this one here that I like, and I'm going to import that data. If I play this, we should see uh, the data. It's essentially a character that's pushing a box. So this is the data that I have to work with. It is the motion of the character pushing something. It already has a T pose, which is good. So I'm ready to export this. And I can do save as, and I want to save this as an FBX, overwrite, and just save it with all of the stuff in it is fine. Um, that's it. That's all we need to do is basically open the file, save it as an FBX, and then I can come over to Maya um, and open that data. So I'm going to close this rig for now. You should be saving as you go along. So I have this saved and ready to go. I'm going to do a new scene. And I'm going to import um, the FBX for the character. And I'm going to import the uh, FBX for the character. So I have this 8105 um, file. And now I'm going to just um, import. So it'll come in at a very different kind of location. It, it may come in arbitrarily. It really depends on how the data was captured what the scaling was. It may come in sideways. Don't worry about that for now. The main thing is just to get it in here. So the, the very first thing we need to do is to also create a character definition for this as well. One thing I like to do with files that, that I'm not sure where they come from, they may have different bone sizes, is it's helpful to kind of change the scaling of the, of the bones. So I'm going to go to display animation joint sizes and maybe drop this down a bit. Um, just so it's easier to see. And then I'm going to open this up in the outliner just so I can see all of the joints that are here, what's going on with them. So this one has hips as its root. Um, there is actually one just above it that's a locator, but hips is again the one that has um, three coming from it. So even though I, if I select the center, I've not actually gotten it until I get the one that has all three coming from it. When I start my character definition, that is the joint, and it's much easier to select in the outliner that I want to assign to the, the um, root bone at the, at the hips. So I've gone to the outliner. I select the bone that has three children, um, that has the left, right, and the back, and I've assigned that to the middle. Now I'm going to go through the same steps as I did for my character rig and, and do that same thing on the motion capture data rig. I'm going to do the left. Um, go through, through these again, uh, try to move through them quickly. And maybe I'll just jump ahead and show you what this looks like when it's done. So here I've just kind of fast forwarded. I've completed um, rigging the character definition. Notice that I've named this character definition, you know, some motion capture data, BVH1. This is the model here. And of course, if I play it, I will see the character, um, the skeleton moving along the motion capture data. Now, notice that the Nathan rig is not here. I'm not working with my character, my primary character. I'm working just with the motion capture data at this point because I want to get clean motion capture data that I could use on many different rigs. My Nathan character is not here. The only thing in this scene file is just the motion capture data and a character rig and a character definition that I've added. So now I'm going to save this as a Maya binary because only Maya binaries have these kind of character definitions in them. I'm going to save this Maya binary, and now I'm ready to um, go back to my Nathan model and finish preparing my Nathan model to take this. So, okay, so here I am back in Maya with the Nathan rig, and I'm ready to bring in the motion capture data that I just finished converting to a definition. So I need to import it. I can't open it because that would replace this. <clears throat> I need to import the motion data, and I'm going to import my Maya binary because that's the only file. First of all, I can't import BVH into Maya. I could import FBX, but it doesn't have the character definition. I want to import the Maya binary that I created of the motion capture data 
that has the character definition for the motion capture. So I'm going to import that. And I see that there's the, the motion data has been added here. It's tiny compared to my character. We're going to get to that later. Um, but you see, if I play it, don't worry about Nathan. If I play it, then this box is going to be, he's pushing the box and that's the, that's the, um, motion that I'm trying to apply to my character. Nathan still has his built-in motion that came with this character. Um, we're just going to ignore that because we don't need it. Um, so now if I look at character on the top right here, I see that there's two characters. There's the Nathan rig, which is this one. And then there's also the BVH one, which I imported from this file. This, the next step to, to animate is as simple as this. I changed the source data for the char Nathan character to be the BVH file. So what I'm doing is I'm saying, I want the, the data, the character, the definition that drives my Nathan model to be the character uh, motion capture data that I've created here. So this is essentially how you would apply motion capture data to a custom rig. Um, that's all there is to it. Now, I mentioned that I was gonna show you failures and this is an example of failure. So this is what happens if things are not set up correctly. And if I animate this, it looks totally bizarre. It looks like a monster. Um, and you're gonna see this the first time you try and do motion capture. Um, this could be fun for some reasons, but it's probably not what you want. Um, and I'm gonna show you how to fix this. So our next step is to go back and see what things did we miss? What did we do wrong um, in order to have this motion data applied to our character? So here I've gone back to the custom rig for Nathan, and I've gone back to the point before I have the motion capture data. This is just the rig, uh, just the custom rig stage. Um, I strongly recommend that you save intermediate files so that you can go back to these various stages. As you proceed, you're gonna find yourself wanting to, to return to correct things that may have happened earlier. So I went back to the point where we just have the Nathan custom rig. And the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start taking care of the scaling and translation issues. And most importantly, everything needs to be translated to the origin. So um, the ideal way to create a control to resize a character is to not try and resize the root joint, whatever it is. This is a root joint here for walking. Um, that may be part of the FK rig and not something you wanna mess with. It's much easier to create what's called a locator. Um, if you go under create and then choose locator, it will create a new locator with nothing under it. But holding the middle mountain bus mouse button, I can drop this underneath as a child of the locators. And if I move the locator around, um, we can see that the um, skin is actually falling. We're gonna fix that in just a minute. So what I need to do is start zeroing the translations so that I don't get these strange effects. Um, the first, the easiest way I found to do this is by going back to the attribute editor and adjusting um, each item. So just by changing its local position. So right here, the locator, I wanna make sure that I'm not on the shape, that I'm on the actual locator. And I see that the translations are all zeroed and the rotations are all zeroed. That looks good. I'm gonna to go to the walking and notice that those translations and rotations are zero. And so that looks fine. This control should also be zero. And finally, the, the root and the root. Um, so anything above the hips really should be at zero and not have any translation or rotation applied to it. So I'm checking all of the joints that are above the hips, including the locator, and making sure that they have no translation and no rotation. So there's a few other things I'm gonna do here to clean this up from a rigging perspective. The first thing I wanna notice is that um, every character is, that you get as an FK rig is going to have a skin or surface that defines the skin and then a skeleton that defines the hierarchy. And those are gonna be two different objects in your scene. Depending on how you got your FK rig, those two things may be under each other, may they may be parented incorrectly. You wanna first correctly parent everything and that means this. The first thing I mentioned is that the root lo is a locator which allows you to scare off the character. So it's very useful to have a locator as a root. I'm gonna rename this as just Nathan character, as just Nathan, just to say that this is the top level of this character. And this is the control that I will use if I want to scale the character or if I want to um, um, change his position. 
just scale the character in any way. Um, you can see that the skin is moving away from the bones, and we're going to fix that in just a second. So coming back to the basic pose, and the next thing I want to do is make sure that the geometry, figure out what is the geometry, which is this group, it's called the geo group. Um, I'm going to rename that as um, the Nathan geometry. And there may be a lot of stuff underneath this, so he may have some other items attached to him. So he may have some other meshes or geometry. This represents the root of all the geometric objects. The other root here is the root of the skeleton. And I'm going to rename that as Nathan, um, Nathan rig, uh, just to distinguish the geometry from the rig, where you can call it Nathan bones hierarchy, right? So we see that under Nathan, there should be two things, Nathan bones geometry. Now geometry is in the correct, incorrect location here. So it's actually under the bones, which doesn't make any sense. So we're going to move, use the middle mouse um, button in order to move the geometry so it's under Nathan. Now this makes a lot more sense. We have a character with a locator, which lets we move him. That character has bones and he has geometry. Now I want to make sure that they're correctly um, tied to each other. In a good rig, the only th the bones get to move the geometry. So what we're going to do, we're going to select the root of the geometry and we're going to go over to the outliner and we right click on translate and lock this attribute. We're also going to lock the rotation and we're going to turn off inherit transform. This means it won't be mistakenly transformed by the, um, the root, by the locator. And now our character moves correctly, the bones move correctly with our character. That's because the geometry should only be moved by the bones and we want to turn off inherit transform. So the flow of information will be down the hierarchy. It will start at the locator, then the motion will move down the hierarchy to the control, and then when we get to the hips, it will start moving all of the joints based on the animation. So now we have a correctly set up character that things may be all over the place in your FK rig when you first get it, but we've placed everything in its correct um, outline, which is that we have a locator at the root, and we have bones under that and geometry separately under that root. That's the right way to set up an FK rig. It should basically have this structure to it. Okay, so I've cleaned up the rig a bit. Let's see what happens if I now import some motion capture data. So I'm going to open my um, my binary with the with the motion capture data, and that comes in small here. As I mentioned, it doesn't matter that it's that the motion capture data is small. I've already um, created a, a character definition on the motion capture. All I need to do then is just change the source to the motion. And now what has happened? So um, the character's off to the side here. I need to rotate and see what's happening. It looks like he's sort of working. It's sort of working, but there's a translation problem. It seems like he's kind of floating in space. At least it's not crazy distorted, but I have this strange problem where it's translated weird. So it turns out that unless your primary rig is not very well set up, you're going to have all kinds of strange issues. So I'm going to go back and show you what you exactly you need to do to your primary rig in order for it to work correctly. There's still a few things I missed. I'm going to disable this motion. I'm just going to leave it here in the outliner because it's fine to keep it here. I'm just going to be working on this rig. You know, I can hide the motion capture just by hitting the H key. It's very useful to be able to hide and show things by hitting H and you can just turn it on and off. Let's go back and take a look at the, at the custom rig. So a few things. So these all look okay. I've zeroed their translations. That's that icon right here. I've turned off translation for all of the joints, except for the center bone, except for the hips, which is, what is how this should work. So all of these translations are off, except for the hips, um, that, this icon right here, and the rotation is kept on. So I'm just getting the rotational motion of the, from the motion capture. Let's take a look at the definition. I'm going to open up the Nathan rig just so I can see down to the hips and including the spine so I can get a sense of what's happening. If I click on this, uh, that's the spine, which is correct. Um, left, uh, right and left arms, uh, head is correct. Um, and then there's the mistake. It's not very clear, but here's the problem. The problem is that my 
root is not the hips, which it should have been. As I mentioned earlier, the hips really need to be the root. And if you miss this, then you're going to get strange translation effects. So I'm going back to my definition. I'm unlocking it, clicking the unlock button, clicking on the hips, and then I'm um, assign selected bone and I click yes. Okay. So now this has been reassigned. Um, checking the, the legs. Uh, so that should be um, one important fix that I needed to do there. Um, let's just return this to stance and see if we get what's going on here. Something else going on with the foot. So I have this weird leg problem that just started and I'm not sure what it was, but I can see this is why the outliner is so useful. I can see that this lower leg R really should be, why is it under root, right? Why is it way out here? This lower leg really should be under the upper leg, should be a child of the upper leg, and somehow it's not. So uh, even putting it back doesn't fix it. So it's actually easiest to go back to an earlier model where it worked and make sure that things don't get reparented as I try and fix things. Okay, so I just loaded my previous clean model um, and uh, everything looks like it's animating again correctly. The le up lower leg is correctly under the upper leg. Now it looks like it's correct. So somehow um, something got reparented and of course I had to fix this main problem. And now once I fix that, I can lock this again and go back to the custom rig. So here we are at the custom rig again. I'm double checking that all my translations have been zeroed except for the except for the um, hips where I do need the translation to get the, the motion correct. And now I'm going to try this again. File, import, uh, import the, the motion capture. And I'm going to assign the motion capture to here. And I get some weirdness still. Um, and I'll explain why this is happening. It still looks like there's some weird twisting of the body and the joints are kind of messed up. Okay, that's just bizarre. Let's go back again. Okay, turn the animation off back here. This time the problem is something else that's a little subtle, and that is my control rig should not have any additional animations on it. You see this walking animation? That walking animation came with the rig, the FK rig. I don't want my primary rig that I'm going to mocap animate to have any animations already on it because those will be composed combined with the incoming animation. So well, that distortion is because this kind of, the two motions are being combined in a strange way. So I want to delete all these keyframes. So to delete these keyframes, um, first I want to make sure I can select the T pose, which you sometimes can't um, do. Notice this motion capture character, he's not, in, not going to his T pose. And that's because of a very strange thing where this is doesn't go all the way to zero. So by changing these two numbers here, just under the timeline, it allows the time slider to go all the way to zero. Now we can see that all the characters can, the, the motion capture data can enter its T pose, which may be the zeroth frame. I also might have more data than expected, than um, is I have time slider here for. So I can set the ending to something much larger, say 500. I don't really need it for this one, but there might be longer animations. So you can adjust the timing um, including going all the way back to the zeroth frame for the T poses in motion capture data, uh, just by setting these numbers to zero and these to the end. Now I need to delete these keyframes. So the way to do this, I found the simplest way to do this, to delete all the keyframes in an animation is to select the entire rig. Remember our Nathan rig is our primary rig and it's the one that we don't want to have any motion capture data on it. Um, we don't want to have any animations on it before we bring in other data. So I'm going to go to the top of it and I'm going to say select uh, from select. I say select hierarchy and this gets me everything. And now I go to windows, um, animation editor, graph editor. And because I've selected the entire hierarchy, I will get every single key in this for this rig. And I just want to delete all of them. So I'm going to drag a box around everything, all of the keys, and delete them all. And this will remove all the keys from my primary rig. I'm going to close this and we'll see that now there's no animation. So now that I've deleted the keys, um, I notice one thing. The character no longer goes to a T pose at frame zero. 
Um, and that's a problem because I do need a T-pose for this to work properly. So the reason is actually because it wasn't my zero keyframe that had the T-pose. I actually incorrectly created my T-pose at like frame one or two. So I need to recreate it now actually at zero. Okay, so character is now back into a T-pose at frame zero and there should be no animation. So it should just remain in the T-pose, which is what we want. I'm going to save this. Okay, so let's try again. I'm gonna import my animation, my motion capture data and bring that in. And now all I need to do is change the source to the motion and let's see what happens. Oh, I still have some weird leg problems. That's interesting. So what's happening here, um, there's still another step that I need to make sure that I do. Um, it's a little bit closer, but still not there. And, but this one is actually quite an easy fix. It's very important that your map rotations and translations are zeroed when you start. And sometimes this is as simple as just unclicking map rotation and then clicking it again so that the rotation offsets become zero and doing the same things with translation um, so that the translation offsets and rotation offsets are zero. That's not quite obvious, but we don't want any additional rotations to be applied beyond what's coming in from the motion capture data. So a correctly set up rig will have map translation and rotation turned on for the hips, but they'll have zero offsets. Um, now let's see what happens. So finally, I have an animation that looks like what I would expect. There's a little bit of foot planning issues, but for the most part, it's pretty much following the animation and it doesn't matter there that they're at different scales so much. Um, I can always use the locator to rescale the character. But finally, the looks like that animation is matching the animation is matching what i expect a really good confirmation that you finally got your rig set up keep in mind that it's the rig that is the most important thing to be set up properly once you do have a good setup rig you should be able to apply any motion so i should be able to bring in another um, animation and just apply it directly without any problems so let's get let's give that a try i've tra i've converted a different bbh file into motion and i'm going to load in that um, file now and it comes in here as step around which is different so the one that I already have bound is this pushing a box motion you can see that there's another little character here and this one is doing a different kind of motion and all I shouldn't be have to do is change this to use the source of the one for stepping around so it is indeed working the way that I want which is now that my rig has been really cleaned up in every way it just it works the way I expect and there's no kind of weirdness happening. It's just working the way I want it to. The key takeaway is there are a lot of little details that you have to get right, but once you do get each of those details right, then your rig will really be stable and you can apply any motion you want to your rig. And I can easily switch between these two motions and the rig will still work properly. This is the basis for doing animation with motion capture. So the next phase, now that I have these two motions, well, I see he can push a box around and I see that he can step around something, step around a box. How could I combine these animations and make a motion that was complete, uh, a composed motion that was created by combining them? And that's what we're gonna do in the next video is I'll show you in the next video how to um, use the, the time editor in order to compose animations. This was primarily a rigging setup. And uh, just as a final going away GIF, I like to turn off the x-ray joints and turn on the hardware texturing again, just so I can see this working in it with a, with a kind of realistic figure. Um, and we can see that you know it is working pretty much correctly at this point. If I click spacebar, I've set up spacebar to be animate. Then I can see that the animation looks pretty close to what I want. There might still need to be some like, I need to fix the feet a little bit, um, but otherwise it's working pretty well. And because I have a stable rig, I can switch to a different motion and that will work as well. Okay, so that's it. Um, in the next anim in video, I hope to show you a little bit of how to use the time editor. 
um, so we can look at how we might start composing animations.